Hello and welcome to our today's webinar uh, uh, about the design of irrigation systems using CFD. My name is Milad and together with me is uh, MD Sujat from L&T who will today share some of his very interesting work with us. Let me first of all quickly introduce myself. My name is Milad. I'm working as a product marketing manager here at SimScale and as a part of this role I'm regularly organizing online workshops, webinars or other learning events uh, which uh, help new users to get started with CFD. And as I mentioned today with me is MD Sujat Ali. He is a senior mechanical design engineer at Allen T Construction. He specialized in fluid dynamic and CFD and um, Today he will show us one of the simulations he has carried out using the SimScale platform. Before we start, let's take a rough look at the agenda. First of all, uh, in around five minutes, I will introduce you to SimScale, tell you uh, what is the idea of cloud-based engineering simulation and how it can be used in different applications within the AEC industry. And after that, uh, Sujat will take over and introduce his company, l and And after that, we've prepared a short live demo uh, where you can see, based on real and in real industrial project, how CFD is used to optimize the lift irrigation system. And finally, we have time for a Q&A session. So let's start with a quick introduction to SimScale. And Basically, I, I like to put it in a nutshell. So, simulation is a very useful and powerful tool which can help engineers to design products faster and better. And simulation has its origin uh, in the 1950s where different approaches were developed to use computers to uh, solve large algebraic equation systems. And today, simulation is used across uh, of a lot of industries, including automotive, aerospace industry, and other high-tech industries. However, um, in the past, simulation was very expensive. And uh, if you wanted to introduce simulation to your company, you had to, to buy software licenses and pay a, a lot of fees in advance. You had to buy dedicated hardware. And so um, it was quite hard, especially for, for small companies to get started with CFD. And CFD was not very flexible because it was usually rest restricted uh, to a, a local uh, hardware network or, or to local computers due to licenses. And five years ago, SimScale was founded with the vision to democratize simulation and to develop the world's first cloud-based engineering simulation platform which can be accessed through the web browser. And, and that's really the whole idea. So with SimScale you can run um, complex CFD or FEA simulation within your web browser. You can do everything from mesh creation to simulation setup and even post-processing in a standard web browser. And you don't need any uh, special or additional hardware since all the computations uh, performed in the cloud. And the great thing about SimScale is that it basically comes with a complete new paradigm of how to use simulation in the engineering process. And first of all, it's all in one tool, so it really covers all major disciplines of engineering simulation, including structural mechanics uh, with, with static and dynamic load cases, fluid dynamics and thermodynamics. And since SimScale is cloud-based, it's quite straightforward to use it. And you can basically use it with any device. So we have some customers which are even running SimScale on a tablet. And um, we are not only leveraging the computational side with the cloud, but basically everything is much more interactive. For example, we have a real-time support. And basically, you can directly contact our support team. Uh, through the workbench using a chat function 
In addition, for sure, you can also use more classical channels for getting in touch with our support, like phone support, email, and we also offer consultancies and a lot of free webinars and trainings. Due to the cloud-based approach, SimScale also comes with a lot of unique features for collaboration, which is not only limited to your own company, so you can share a private project with your colleague and, and customers, but we also have a big community with more than 120,000 users, which are exchanging simulation templates, uh, feedback and ideas. And uh, SimScale is very cost-efficient since we have a freemium pricing model, so we can basically to start to simulate completely for free. And also one aspect I would like to highlight that SimScale is very flexible and at the same time very safe. So uh, all your data is encrypted uh, through several stages, uh, which makes it also a very, very uh, interesting tool for customers who have high standards regarding the data security. Now let's talk a little bit about the application of, of simulation and especially of CFD, of computational fluid dynamics. Um, and at some scale, since there are so many different applications, we usually try to gather applications which, let's say, are very much related to, get to each other. And so we gathered some uh, example applications from the field of architecture, engineering and construction. And, for example, SimScale is used a lot and CFD is used a lot to validate HVAC systems and parts. Let's say you have a big residential building with your air conditioning system uh, and you want to optimize this, this uh, the ducting layout. This is a to-go tool because it allows you to precisely simulate uh, the thermal comfort inside the rooms and the energy efficiency of, of the HVAC system. And energy efficiency is a very good good point. So basically, a lot of, of, of a, nearly any aspect of, of, of construction can be optimized with regard to energy efficiency using simulation. So the HVAC system is an example, but also what Sujat is going to present us in, in around five minutes. Uh, it's also about uh, improving efficiency. And another very, very interesting example, which I really like, is uh, wind engineering, and especially the prediction of wind loads. We have some customers which are like involved in the design of, of super high skyscrapers, and they use CFD simulation to, to get an idea about the loads acting on the facade, and this information is then further used by, by the structural engineers to, to uh, find the right designs for the structural uh, parts of the building. And you can also use it for optimize air quality in terms of thermal comfort or, or contamination. And as I mentioned, CFD can or simulation can be uh, applied to a lot of different industries. And besides the AC industry, simulation is also used a lot in electronics design, in the energy industry and in automotive. Yes, it was a short introduction to our company and now I'm really happy to, to uh, give over to, to uh, Sujat who will now uh, explain us and tell us how Alan T is using SimScale for their own design projects. Uh, thank you, William. And uh, yeah, uh, this is Sujat Ali from LNT Construction. So, LNT Construction basically is a part of Larson and Tugo group of companies and LNT Construction is India's largest construction organization. And it has been ranked in among the top, uh, among, the, among the world's top 30 contractors. And moreover, LNT Construction is present in more than 30 countries worldwide. And being the India's largest construction organization, LNT has, its, uh, has done a lot of landmark projects for the country. That includes uh, construction of airports, uh, metros, uh, and other significant projects. So uh, right now I am working in water and plant treatment, which is an independent part inside Olympic construction, which which deals with uh, water supply, wastewater treatments, effluent treatments, and lift irrigation projects. So how SimScale is helping Olympic? 
we are using SimScale for doing computational fluid dynamics and uh, for basically lift irrigation projects. So being cloud-based, SimScale really omits the necessity for having a multi-core processor systems. So this hardware cost is safe for us and thanks to SimScale. And SimScale uh, interface is really very user-friendly and the support is like really, really good. Like if, and one more feature of SimScale is that like we can share the projects. So if I find any problem while doing any computation fluid dynamics, I'll just share the project with the SimScale expert team and they, they've come up with a solution. And that is really, really very good. So talking about the today's webinar, uh, there are certain uh, fluid phenomena which should be avoided in the sums uh, which, which are designed for lifting water from one place to another. So what are these uh, fluid phenomena? The first one is the submerged vortices. So these must be avoided and this can be identified by uh, through in computational fluid dynamics, they'll, they'll be represented by streamlines like a spring. And there, there's a second type of things which are to be avoided are free surface vortices. I think in, in the picture on the right side of it, it's it's visible like a free surface vortex has been has been formed while the pumping is in operation and these must be avoided and third one being the non uniform spatial distribution of velocity at the impeller eye and the fourth one being excessive pre swirl of flow entering the sum so now we are heading for this live demonstration like how we used uh, uh, compression fluid dynamics using sim scale to solve one of our problems so this is uh, basically an intact structure in in this in this structure water is coming from a reservoir and are being pumped to some other location using pumps so uh, we have a four bay here and we have certain columns certain vertical lines we can see here so these are basically the columns and we had designed earlier to construct firefighting uh, pumping station above this sum. So now we did some uh, analysis and found out that this is not okay. Then we removed the columns and then again we found out like okay this is also not satisfactory. Then again we moved, moved on uh, to bring some flow guiding structure inside uh, in, near to the pumps. So let's talk about the computational effort that was being uh, uh, used to simulate all the three cases. Like for comparison, the mesh size for all the three geometries were in between two to three millions. The time steps for convergence were 2000 seconds and the computational time were more or less were same for around 60 minutes. And for all the three cases, we used number of cores as 32. So uh, this is the original geometry uh, and uh, we did the CMT for that and then we found out that these vertical columns are creating obstacles, are creating hindrance uh, for the flow to reach this fifth number of pump while calculating from the left side. So this was really not acceptable and as per Hydraulic Stewart's Institute and Standards uh, Manual. So ultimately we have to uh, redesign it and we have to remove the columns. So what we did in the next step is remove the column. So even after removing the columns, we can find out in these areas like there are flow separation regions near to the pumps uh, because of the walls that are dividing the pumps. Since we we need the walls that are dividing the pumps, that is that is really mandatory. So we need to avoid these flow separations. So these flow separations can be avoided by introducing flow guide walls. So we introduce flow guide walls uh, uh, near to the pumps and uh, to make sure like the flow is really very streamlined, is very laminar. So here we can see that for all the pumps, the flow is really very laminar, no chaotic behavior in the flow characteristics and this is the final result that we wanted. So this really served our purpose of using CFD. 
and here again there is uh, uh, there are other things that can be done to further mod uh, modify it to further enhance the flow characteristics here we can see that there are certain flow circulation regions in these areas so while so after increasing after decreasing this angle this wall angle that is creating with the horizontal and increasing the length of this four way we can reduce that further but it was like okay this result is like satisfactory so we went ahead for this so the next thing that is really important for these kind of some computation sum model studies is uh, the calculation of soil angle so what hydraulic institute and standard says that is soil angle should be less than 5 degrees so for the original geometry the soil angle was really very high and that too for the fifth pump uh, in which we had columns that was causing flow uh, that, uh, that was cause, causing the flow separation and thus increasing the soil angle for that pump so after subsequent modification in the geometry we can find out that the soil angle has been reduced to a great extent and is well within the acceptable limit so that's all about the presentation and questions Sujat, thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. We don't have any questions so far, guys. So this is your last chance. If there is something you want to know, just write into the question toolbox. Uh, but in the case, uh, maybe uh, you got something, a new question, tomorrow you can also send me an email. I will uh, just reply to the email I sent you after the uh, you registered for the webinar. And then I can also forward the question to Sujat if necessary. All right, um, seems like all questions are answered. Uh, Sujat, again, thank you very much for, for being our guest today. It was a pleasure. Also, a big thanks to the attendees. And yes, hope to see you soon for one of our next webinars. Have a good weekend. See thank you soon. You. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.